let's do a quick introduction to our guests because we've got kind of three partners here that we've been working together with. I'll just keep it off. I'm Glenn Booth from Fort AD. Hello, thank you for having us. We're very grateful to be here. Um, and by the way, thank you for a great RFI, whoever's responsible for that. We see a lot of these RFPs, RFIs. A lot of them don't have everything they need, so there's a lot of back and forth, so thank you for that. Uh, I run the division for Ford in Denver. We're kind of near the airport, if you will. Um, I've just been here about three years, but uh, Ford's been around 50 years. And we would support this opportunity out of the Denver office. So okay. we have like 50 people, um, in Denver, 52 okay. I guess today, uh, mostly engineers, designers, things like that, installers. Um, so I'm part of the Ford team, and then just to introduce Thomas Wings, are you there? Would you guys want to go around and introduce ourselves? Thomas? Yes, sir, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, my name is Thomas Williams. I'm actually out of the Oklahoma City office. Uh, I am a design estimator for Ford. Uh, I'm one of several, um, and I I actually uh, design mostly security systems. Uh, and then my secondary would be uh, paging and comm systems for schools. Uh, is something I have a lot of familiarity with, and I have some integrations here locally. Um, I've been with Ford for a few years now, and have worked with Glenn closely on several projects. So I'm excited to be here for this one. Thomas. And then as you read in our response, IED and single wire makes Informacat. So those are our partners. We work with these people for decades, literally. Uh, DIA, for instance, we worked with uh, the team for probably 20 plus years on the whole emergency communication system at DIA, as well as DFW and a bunch of other airports. So I want to introduce our friends over at CB Electronic Marketing. Larry Bigford, Corey Bigford. I don't know if you remember, we were out about a year ago and did a walk through with your high school. No, so, sure yeah. yeah, so so we represent a number of different audio video lines. One of them is the Atlas IED system. Ford AV is one of our premier dealers. Um, you know, they have offices all over, they do a great job for us. On the uh, uh, call there, we've got Bob Lichty. He is our Rocky Mountain Regional. So he is from Atlas IED. Um, Manny Kitagawa, who is right above Thomas's picture, he is the kind of the manager for the IP gear for the Atlas IP systems. And then we've got Doug and Ben from Single Wire. So that's one of our partners. So Atlas has partnered up with Single Wire. We, we um, kind of do the head end, the hard, hard wired stuff. And then they're doing all the software to make this thing all work, to work in conjunction with all your guys' different needs. Hello, everybody. Hello, thanks for being here. Hi, Manny. Hello, all right. So, should we kick it off with uh, Mr. Doug and talk a little bit about this? Your intention, please. <laughs> 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 We're big into branding, you know. We are. You, you've heard, and, and one last thing before we, before Doug jumps in, but you've heard her voice. She's the voice at the airports. So we've done, uh, I don't know, probably 25 different airports. So, that before. so that's don't park in the red zone. No. So, yeah. All right, Doug, sorry about that. You're up, sir. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, nice to meet everybody. Thank you very much for taking the time today and inviting us into your into your campus. Um, my name is Doug Glenn. I'm the regional manager from Single Wire Software, so looking after the four corner states all the way to the west. Um, and I've been with the company for over five years, so uh, pleasure to meet you all. Um, I deal with a lot of different school districts all over the country. Um, Probably the biggest one that I've got right now that I've been working with is San Diego Unified. So what we're going to be talking about today with you, they actually have uh, what I'm showing you in 200 schools. So they've got 30,000 staff and over 200,000 students. Um, and they spent about three years looking for a safety uh, paging intercom safety security solution. And they went with single wire with Atlas IED. So uh, what I'll do is, uh, let me share my screen here. Um, I did want to ask a few questions before I kick off. So um, can you guys hear me OK? Because you guys yeah. froze on, the, on my screen. Yeah, we can. OK. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so basically, uh, one of the 
questions I just wanted to ask because it'll steer the conversation slightly differently is what phone system are you guys using currently today? Cisco. Yeah, Cisco. Cisco. Okay, perfect. We are potentially planning though on uh, doing a RFP process and or RFI RFP process and and maybe be switching to a cloud-based solution, which may be Cisco okay. and may not. Okay, so when you say cloud-based, would it, would you also be uh, considering potentially WebEx calling through Cisco? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, not a problem. Um, and just so you know, uh, the only reason I ask that, we're native to the Cisco environment today. We do work with a bunch of other companies. So whatever direction you tend to go with, if you're looking at Microsoft Teams Voice, or if you're looking at AY8, or Ring Central, or Zoom or whatever you're looking at, chances are we're gonna be working with it. It's not a problem. So it's very future proof. We, we work with all of those different main, what we call UCAS providers. But I just wanted to know kind of how, how we're tackling this from today. So not a problem, okay. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, down in my demo room here in the background too, because somebody else was in my room. So I'll get this queued up so you will hear a ring, but don't worry about that. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, share my screen. There we go, now I can see you guys. <laughs> no, thanks. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and go into my presentation. Can you guys see that screen okay on your end? Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And one more, one more question before we begin. Uh, what are you guys doing, what are you utilizing today in terms of your emergency notification capability? Do you have a system that you're using today at all, or is this something new that you're looking for? We currently have AMX School View. Okay. And are, what are you using that to alert to? What types of devices? So that's just our is that system going to like JBL speakers in my classroom, that's it. Okay, so just overhead speakers? Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you very much. That's just helpful in terms of directing the conversation. So, um, right, let's go ahead and kick off. Thank you for that, that helps me a lot. Um, okay, so I thought I'd just do one quick slide on who SingleWire is. So SingleWire software, uh, we've been around for over 20 years. Uh, we are an OEM partners of Cisco, so uh, your Cisco phones that you have, that base software that allows you to pick up the phone and page to other devices is our software. So if you, you, you know, that is quite limited in its uh, out of the factory uh, OEM capability. It's only up to 50 phones. You can't do phones and speakers at the same time, which is why we look at what we're gonna talk about today. Um, we are very much a software owned company that helps work with a bunch of different infrastructure like Atlas ID and others um, to bring you an end to end uh, critical communication platform. So, anything from just hey, basic paging and bells to a full fledged emergency <coughs> notification capability. Uh, we have uh, over 7,000 customers globally. I actually do manage our international business as well. Um, and I can tell you globally, we have a lot of schools using this from, uh, from K-12 up to higher ed. So lots and lots of different customers out there and for different use cases. Um, I'm actually gonna go to the use cases first before I do this. So the use cases that we tend to satisfy in a K-12 environment is some of those ELISA law um, requirements that are federally coming up. Um, some states are obviously already requiring those. Um, paging and intercom, like I said, just basic paging. Hey, I want to pick up my, my Cisco phone and I want to page to other phones, or I want to page to a combination of phones and speakers. Um, school bells, so it's got a really nice school bell user interface, um, and it allows you to use utilize a lot of different infrastructure to, to be create a school bell. I mean, San Diego Unified is even using people's cell phones that are deaf and hard of hearing where it'll vibrate their cell phone. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, 911 alerting, right now, if you were to dial 911, if you had our software on your Cisco phone system, 
that could complement um, any E911 uh, capability where basically we could alert people maybe that know CPR locally, um, that they could attend to that uh, emergency before first responders actually get to you. Um, any active shooter type of events, heaven forbid that ever happens, but we, we help really control those situations when they do. Um, any fire drills, uh, panic buttons is a big one in, in K-12. I was telling the guys yesterday, we'll, we'll go into that a little bit, the, the form factors of different panic buttons has really increased and the need for those has increased. Um, IoT type integrations, what do I mean by that? For those that aren't technical, that means Internet of Things, which means basically anything that connects to the Internet. So think of cameras, access control doors, or any type of sensor or anything like that. Believe it or not, I've actually even got a school district in the desert that wanted to save water, and so they have our software go turn off the urinals on the weekends because they want to save water. So I mean, just think of it as anything that can be triggered to turn things on or off. Um, severe weather is a big one for us, and I mean, being in Colorado, um, you know, I know that severe weather could be uh, very useful for you to have warnings. Uh, but any type the National Weather Service can trigger, you can get those on different devices. And then more day-to-day -day type of things. So, you know, maybe IT is having an outage, maybe there's a phishing attempt to some kind of cyber event going on, and you're, you just want to ticker tape across people's laptops or put it on their Cisco phone saying, hey, don't click on that link. Something like that. So lots of different use cases in the K-12 environment. In terms of the way the company's structured, I'm going to really focus today on what's called Informacast is the name of the product. The version of what we're talking about today is called Fusion. And the reason why it's called Fusion is it's actually taking three different types of technology being on-premise equipment, mobile equipment, and collaboration platforms and gluing them together as a delivery point. So in an emergency, you don't know where you're going to be per se, so you want the ability to be able to cross-communicate to different types of technology to make sure that that is consumed in some way, shape, or form. Okay? Um, and basically, uh, what we're going to work with is a bunch of different types of technology. There's nothing proprietary here. Uh, there's a lot of paging solutions that are out there where you, know, you have to buy everything from that one particular vendor. We don't work like that. We work in a different way, which is you already own some of this stuff, and you might want to augment it with some other stuff, but you want to choose best of breed of the different product categories that you want to choose. You don't want somebody dictating to you what you need to buy. Um, so it's a very open platform in that way. And how we focus on that is really how do you detect an emergency, then how do I notify people on different types of technology? And then better yet, how do I manage that event during the event? You know, maybe I'm now outside. It's not safe for me to go back into that building, but I need to manage and see how people are responding to my questions of being safe or not, so I know where to direct first responders. So it allows you to manage that from anywhere. I could be managing that from my home office even, okay? Um, on the right-hand side, we've got what we, we've kind of singled out our duress solutions. It's all run by Informacast, but, um, which is just software. Um, but what duress is, uh, we single it out because a lot of school districts have been asking for different types of duress solutions. I mean, I was involved with uh, Clark County in Nevada recently, where Clark County actually, uh, they had three incidents, and this is all public information, but they had two sexual assaults and a teacher beaten very badly in the matter of one week. Um, and so they went out and dictated they wanted all of their staff to have a wearable solution. So they don't want to have to worry about having to be by a particular device that they could trigger. What if I hear there's somebody endangering me between me and a particular device? So they want to be able to have a wearable on them, you know, something like this where they've got my wearable around the lanyard and I can just basically uh, push a panic button. We also have that capability on things like your mobile device, like your cell phone. Um, so, you know, walk into my car, it's winter, it's getting dark early, I might not feel safe, I just want to alert somebody back in the office um, that I might need some assistance. We can do things like that from keyboards as well. Like I, every, a lot of people have computers. Maybe I'm a teacher and I'm talking to a student. I'm a or I'm a counselor and I've got a student in there. I don't feel safe. I want to alert security that I might need some assistance. 
Um, besides that, I could even create a panic button on my Cisco phone. Um, you know, I had an instance the other week where somebody tried to pick up their student, uh, the, I should say a student, it was their, their son, and they didn't have full custody of, the, of that child. So they started getting a little bit violent with the person that wouldn't release their son to them, and that person was able to push a button on their Cisco phone to alert safety and security behind the scenes. So all these different types of things that you can utilize, a lot of this stuff you might already have, um, but we're just gonna turn it into a more of a one-to-one, -one, I might need help type of solution. And then as a future in the middle, I'm not gonna really go into this, but just as an FYI, we do own a visitor management component, which I don't know if you guys have anything today. Do you, are you guys using any kind of visitor uh, management for people coming in into your schools? We use Raptor. Use Raptor, okay. Are you guys happy with that? Not unhappy. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's good. Neutral. Yeah, neutral. That's, That's good. Um, yeah, so what we did, what we did here is that we bought a company, um, it's inter interestingly enough that you mentioned Raptor because they went after Raptor as a target, interviewed a bunch of different school districts about how happy they were with Raptor, and then anything that people weren't happy about, they basically went and created the solution for that and then we bought them so if you're ever interested in the future we do have this solution it's just a matter of allowing people you know tracking people in and out checking them against all those sexual predator databases FBI watch lists injunctions those kind of things and then we have some really great features in terms of uh, we do have one thing we have different than Raptors the ability to do facial recognition because what we see with a lot of these systems is you know I have my ID and maybe I have a fake ID and, or maybe I'm Bob Smith and it pulls up 50 Bob Smiths. So this allows you to be able to then quickly alert behind the scenes with facial recognition, you get a really accurate reading. And then it, you can use Informacast in the background to go and alert the person on their cell phone or the person on their desktop or their Cisco phone to come to the front office or over an analyst speaker, hey, you know, the, you know, predator at the front office so that you don't have that person at the front desk having to deal with a potentially threatening situation. So there's some great stuff we do there. We've got some great student elements as well in terms of reunification. The reason I'm bringing this up is, let's say I just had a lockdown and I've triggered that in Formacast. It's gone over my speakers and my cell phones and everything else. But now um, uh, that's over, I've done an all clear, but all the parents have shown up. And now I wanna check the kids back to their parents or their guardian. How do I safely do that? I can do that with this reunification capability where I'm checking them back to the parent and have an audit trail of having done that because I don't want to be liable as a school district, you know, that I actually have the, a, a nice audit trail of what I've, who's gone where, okay? So I'm, I know we're not here to focus on that today, so I will continue. Um, so we're going to talk any, about... Anybody have any questions or anything? Okay. 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 Yeah, please, let's make this as interactive as possible. <clears throat> Any questions so far? Nope, I think we're good. Okay, please do interject if you have any, because this is for you guys, not for me to be presenting to you. So, um, so if, if you look at this slide, this is my main slide, right? And so what I'm gonna preface before I start talking about this slide is Informacast as a software program is extremely powerful. Right? It's kind of like a Swiss Army knife in that you got software that sits in the middle of a bunch of different infrastructure. Again, some of this you own, some of this you might purchase. What I want to be really clear on is some people just do a few simple integrations. You know, San Diego Unified, they just use their Cisco phones, mobile phones, laptops, and Atlas speakers. They don't have any other uh, fancy integrations. And that's how they've been able to, to draft this against their safety and security policies. However, in the future, they're looking to integrate into some other things. And that's why I wanted to give you, let's just call it the possible of what you could do in the future if you chose to do it. Okay, so I don't want it to come off as, wow, that's a lot of stuff. Um, and we were looking for something simpler. It is a simple solution that does give you the ability to add stuff if you chose to do it in the future. And because we have such a simplistic uh, model of licensing, that stuff is just there that you can turn on. 
you, so a lot of it's just integrations you turn on or a plugin that's already available. So you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of extra stuff, okay? Um, there's a lot of uh, companies where everything's like an a la carte menu. That's not what this is. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about this slide. So think about Informicast in the middle here. On the left hand side, I've got all my trigger points, okay? So where do I want to trigger something? Whether I'm manually doing that or it's automated setup. Then on the right hand side of my targets, so where am I actually going to send a message to or make something happen? And again, we're quite unique in the market and because we're doing on-premise equipment, mobility, and collaboration all under the same platform. Okay, we're not, we're not behind the scenes gluing different companies together because there are people that do that as well. They, uh, through a marketing front, they actually have several companies that do different things. This is actually one platform. Um, are you guys, quick question, are you using collaboration today? Yeah, we use Google Meet. Google me. Okay. Gotcha. So what we've got here is the ability, let's just look at our trigger points. Okay. So this is something as simple as I got my Cisco phone or in the future, if you want to move to Polycom or Yale Link or whatever it might be, Zoom phone, it, it'll work. Um, but today I'm going to talk where, where you, what you're currently using. So I've got my Cisco phone. I'm going to pick up my phone. I want to either dial a few digits to open up a paging zone or I want to have a soft key I press and that triggers something automatic like a lockdown, right? I can pin code that soft key so that you don't have somebody dust in your phone accidentally click the school on lockdown, right? But this gives you options to use that Cisco phone as a very powerful device. And when I pick that up and, and, and page or do pre-record it, it can basically engage a lot of different technology on the right. Go to IP, uh, IP Alice speakers or older analog paging systems, even put audio through computers and all these other things, okay? Um, so my, my Cisco phone system, which you already own, becomes a really important element of this communication strategy. The second thing is it gives you the ability to use your cell phone, okay? So what's great about this is not only can I just trigger from my cell phone something I already have pre uh, set up as what we'll call a template um, but I can also do something ad hoc you know during the pandemic we had a lot of people and some of you might still be working from home on different days right so what if I'm a superintendent and I'm working from home but I want to page into my district office I can do that from my home office I can literally take out my cell phone select that building, record a message and push send, and it'll go loudspeaker to Cisco phones and Atlas speakers remotely. Whatever, whatever, uh, wherever in the district I want to do that, you can choose to work. I have a question so, about that. How does that yes, work sir. from a network point of view? Do you have to VPN into the network first, or is it native cloud application? Native cloud application through AWS. Yeah, you do not have to VPN into the network in order to access that. Okay, and you can do it over Wi-Fi, obviously, or through GSM. Okay. Um, what I can also do on that is I can obviously manage, as I was saying earlier, the situation from that phone. So your mobile phone becomes a really powerful device. You know, mobile phones on their own because believe it or not, there are some emergency systems out there that are mobile only. <clears throat> mobile phones are very powerful, but not as a single source for an emergency. You know, uh, a few examples above the obvious is, you know, bad reception. I have my phone on silent because my teacher told me to put it on silent. Or uh, you, I'm visiting your district today and you don't know my phone number. How are you going to alert me that I need to evacuate your building? So we use on-premise equipment coupled with that as a very powerful solution, okay? Um, and what we do next is really important in K-12, which is simplicity. You have to be able to have this be a very easy system to use. And so, uh, you know, you guys have turnover, you have people coming and going, you have substitute teachers, you have contractors, um, or I just, and doing four drills a year and in a high adrenaline charge situation, I'm going to panic. 
I forget what to do, right? So this makes it super easy. We're used to pushing apps or buttons on our laptop. So it's as simple as, we call it our command center, but uh, I push lockdown this school, which will be all pre-populated, all the schools you have, all in a list, as your drop-down menu, go. And so you don't have to really think about much except for click, click, go, right? And so it makes it super simple for you to also train people and easy to manage. Um, panic buttons I already mentioned, so I won't go deeper into that, but just the fact that we have a lot of different form factors that we talked about. Um, and then when we go to more automated type devices, I already talked about whether um, that 911 capability from your Cisco phones, which is very highly used in San Diego and a lot of districts that I manage. Um, and then as a future, you could integrate this into access control systems or your fire alarm or your video cameras. You know, let me give you a quick example of something that happened in one of the school districts I look after in the pandemic was all their buses were obviously stationary in, in a bus yard. So they were having a tagging problem. The kids were climbing over the fence and tagging all the buses. And so they used to have just a light that would go on. So the kids were like, great, now I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> um, and so that was a big problem. Somebody have a question there? No? OK. Um, and so basically, they said, Doug, we, they had our product. And they were like, how can we better what we're doing? And so we talked it through. And what we came down to was, they wanted safety and security people remotely to be tr to be notified at any given moment, so they're not waking up in the morning and going to school and then seeing damage. There was another incident where somebody was breaking through a door and trying to steal a bunch of Chromebooks, you know. But it was averted because they were alerted about it immediately. So in this situation, what we did is we had the lights going on, but at the same time, the motion sensor on the camera uh, picked up the kids coming over the fence. And then it alerted a, a safety and security person at home on their cell phone that, hey, that camera's just been triggered. And it produced a URL to that camera link so they could just tap in and go, hey, I want to look at what's going on there. And so now they're looking into that area. And at the same time, over a horn, we played authorities are watching, or we're watching when authorities are on their way. So now the kids are like, ooh, you know, something's actually happening here. Um, then to firm it up, they were able to use that remote paging capability I just talked about over your cell phone. And they were able to just choose that horn and record, hey, you in the red hat, put down the spray can and walk away. You know, the police are on their way. Now the kids were like, whoa, they actually have just described me and now we can get out of here, right? So these are the kinds of things that are simple integrations that you just turn on um, so that you have a really good end-to-end -end application. So now I'm not just doing paging, um, I'm actually using this in a really effective way. Okay, any questions about that? Yeah. Doug, are you going to go into how that, that integration works? Like what type of device you've got, where that sits, and how the two things integrate together? I can do that right now really quickly. So we try to do, we try to make our platform as open as possible, right? So. So how we do it with the camera, in this instance, some cameras, uh, we have an uh, open API and companies have written to it. Um, and some systems, so that we can cover as many camera systems as possible. Most cameras will have an email trigger they can use. So when a motion sensor goes off or something happens on that camera, maybe even facial recognition, um, it triggers an email into our software that then triggers everything that you want to happen thereafter. So that's in terms of what happens with a lot of the camera technology. In terms of access control, that's usually done through a contact closure. And even Atlas sells a contact closure. Um, some access control systems, uh, like I'll give you an example, Verkata, uh, they, they already have that API listed on their website. So you can go in and look at that with our software. But it's just because uh, they have access control already uh, uh, that contact closure built into their software and built into their uh, access control system. So we've tried to make it as simple as possible to be able to, we don't care what brand you're using, if that protocol that that system can use can send it into our software, we can make everything downstream happen that we need to happen. So hopefully that answers that question and we can go deeper into that 
a little bit later, and on our website we show where all the integrations with all the particular vendors are already listed. And then if you had any additional questions, we can go through those specifically. Um, so it's just the, the, the headline there is we try to make it really simple. Uh, and if you don't, if, we're, if it's not already there, then a number of companies or partners write to the API. Okay. Right, so let's look at some other things. Fire alarm, same thing. Fire panels, we don't want to integrate directly into a fire panel. There's just way too many. If there's anybody that's in the room that deals with fire panels, you'll know what I'm talking about. There's way too many federal regulations around this. So what we do is we do that also through contact closure. So I'm a superintendent. I'm sat at home. I see that the fire panel, the fire pole, the fire pole in the elementary school on floor two has just been pulled. I can have that pop up on my laptop or my cell phone at home so I can make a call into that school and go, what's going on? You know, was this an accident or you guys have a problem? Okay. So it just allows you to be able to trigger those messages anywhere and make it extended to other things. So, you know, cell phones, desktops, etc. Okay. Um, the other things we won't go into, but like gunshot detection systems and other types of third party integrations, we do have those as well. So where are we sending notifications to? So now that Cisco phone system you have becomes a really powerful platform because now it's not just my phone system and a paging system, it's actually part of my core to my emergency system. So with Cisco, we have the ability not just to put audio through it, but to also put text onto the screens and even change the color of the screen if you have a color capable device. So then what I can do is even ask people to respond to a question from the screen of their device. So how San Diego Unified will use it is they're going to put in a lockdown, they're going to ask three things, safe inside the building, safe outside the building, or I need help. The Cisco phone has lockdown come out of the screen and go through the speaker, and then they can respond. There's a respond button right on their Cisco phone where they can click on which one of those it is. Okay. I also have the ability to use my computer to respond. And to your question earlier about VPN access, we have two different versions of this. We call it our desktop notification. You can either notify through our traditional client, which is a little bit of light software that goes onto your laptop or desktop and has a bunch of different form factors, you know, take over the whole screen or just take or take across the bottom, you know, a little message that pops in from the side, whatever you want but it has intrusive audio that can come through that as well. So if I'm a teacher and I'm presenting in a classroom and I'm sharing my screen up on the, onto a, a wall, I can have that audio scream through my computer and take over my laptop so that all those students in that room can actually see what's going on and that teacher can even respond to the question right from his or her laptop. Okay. Um, we also have a cloud available capability there where I don't want to download software on my laptop and I don't want to VPN in. I'm at the local Starbucks and I still want to get that message. You can have that happen. It doesn't have as broad of a capability in terms of intrusive audio, but you're still going to get the notification on your laptop how you get normal notifications on a laptop. You, know, you can have a ping signal and then have it sit there, but you're going to be able to receive that and utilize it from anywhere without a VPN capability. Okay. Um, IP speakers, uh, Atlas is obviously there today. Um, we work very well with Atlas. Um, and they're probably one of our biggest vendors that we work with and we've been working with for years. Um, San Diego Unified, one of the reasons that they liked Atlas is uh, the speakers that they chose. They used to have a separate clock on the wall and then they had um, a speaker. <laughs> and they probably wouldn't want me saying this, but some of their speakers were so bad, I'm not joking when I say that the, afterwards the front office would send an email out that would say what they just paged. The, I'm not joking. And so basically what they, what they were able to do now is they were able to combine that into one device so that it's a speaker combo with a, uh, with a, with a clock on it. And it has, uh, they have a lot of deaf and hard of hearing individuals. And so they were like, how do we solve that problem? Our, our students and teachers, they even have a few staff members that are hard of hearing. They're not gonna hear that emergency message. So how am I gonna handle that? 
So these speakers have uh, flashers to get those students or staff's attention, and then they scroll the text and they can change the, the color of the screen as well. So if it's an emergency, they want that to flash red. Um, in San Diego, they're even using that for a school bell because before the kids even had to look around and just say, oh, well, the people are starting out of the room, so the bell must have went off. So what they'll even do is have a flat, different flasher for the school bell and then scroll school bell across that so that those kids know that there's a school bell. And even outside, they'll take their, will vibrate the mobile phone of that student in, if they're in passing, um, because in California, a lot of the hallways are outside, right? Um, and so they, in passing, need to be able to know when that school bell goes off. So lots of things we can do there, but that Atlas speaker becomes a really important element of uh, satisfying that requirement. Um, if you still have some older systems, like I, you know, I want to augment it with some older analog paging in specific areas as well, we can do that. And there is a zone controller that can be put in to be able to plug that in. Um, Doug, real quick, so, do you want me to send off a notification that you've talked about Cisco and the clock and because I have it all set up here, so I can at least show them kind of what you're what you're talking. Sure, about. go for it. I've got my demo room in here too, but it'd be great for them to see that local. So, okay. yeah, absolutely, go for it. So, you guys will see. I just have a Cisco phone set up here, and then as Doug was talking about before, I can have push buttons that are already you know, pre-recorded or pre-you know determined what it is, mm -hmm. and then of course we can have dials that are specific things as well with passcodes and things like that. But let me pick one that hopefully won't evacuate your disability or something. First lunch, grades two and four. It did, though. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know what, and again, what that one specifically did. So we, we can make that background any color you want, that flash or anyone. So it could be green for that. It could be red for an emergency, blue for whatever you guys would like. So, uh, so all repeat the, it three times. All the, time that that want, all, right? all the text, how many times it scrolls, right. colors, all of that could be changed. And uh, something I don't know, Manny will probably talk about later, but something we do differently than anybody is, you know, since we have the ability to do that, a lot of schools have a problem with when we send off a notification they don't know the difference between you know a real event and a fake event because it's just like hey everybody just kind of sits there and looks at it where we have the ability to say hey you know this is a test and whatnot and then when it is actually the real thing you know it's a specific color it just simply says lockdown and the kids will know like okay this must not be a test then mm -hmm. do you want to do another one <clears throat> i'll do one then attention the building is being evacuated. For your own safety, please exit the building at the nearest emergency exit. Police and security personnel will direct you to a safe area. So again on there, we can have all kinds of different templates for you guys. So it makes it really easy for especially somebody at the front to hit one of those buttons. They don't have to remember, okay, what do I have to say? How do I do this? And how do I do? How do I send that signal out? It does it automatically. And then that zone controller <coughs> that Doug was talking about is just this. It is just this little box right here, right? So what we have is we have the network cable coming in. We have a line going out. It could go into, let's say, like when we were, when we were walking around the high school, you guys had a whole bunch of speakers down the hallway. You want to keep those, but we want to have it on to the network so we can still send emergency messages. We can use this box. We can use this box as well if you guys are doing football field, something where it's in, like where we can send like Wi-Fi out to the football field. Have this here. Have that go into like a priority relay, maybe on the, the mixing console. The football game's going. All of a sudden, that counts is out. We have a message, that tone that goes through. And then we would have the message, hey, please don't go back to the school, evacuate this way or whatever. Also with temp, uh, temp buildings as well. So Larry, that's sort of a uh, IP to analog. It is, yeah. you're exactly right. And then we have some, so we've got non-powered and powered versions of this as well. So we've got some with amplifiers. So if we're doing like a little temporary building, you know, where we only have like four speakers in there, we could put one of these in there and we'd run those four speakers as well. So, okay. sorry, Doug. I just <coughs> well, that's really good timing. Figured, figured we'd show it all since you just talked all the time. Cool. Yeah. 
No, that's excellent. It's good to see it locally as well, right? And so um, what, what I'm going to do is I'll finish up this slide and then I'm going to bring up my demo room because I'm going to show how we're going to work with Atlas, Cisco, and the cell phone capabilities and the desktop capabilities, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll be able to see a bunch of different infrastructure remotely being triggered. And I'm in California and that's in Wisconsin. So you'll be able to see the, how quickly this stuff can happen from anywhere, right? Um, okay, so where else can you send notifications to? We have a plugin for digital signage. So we work with most of the main digital signage companies that are out in the market. We've got those all listed. But literally, I can use that real estate. So if I have that in the front office or in a break room or somewhere else, I can use that. If I have people walking around like safety and security personnel or maintenance personnel with a two-way radio, I can put audio through those as well. Um, so, sorry, was there a question there? No, sorry. Nope, okay. Sorry, when it picks up, it's not, I hear every little thing. So I don't know if somebody's trying to flag me down. So. Um, so lots of different types of safety and security stuff, including, hey, I just put the building on lockdown and I want to go lock immediately all my external access control doors. You can do that. Or there's a fire. I want to make sure all my doors are unlocked. So you can do things with physical infrastructure, too. Um, mobility doesn't have to be to the app. So if I have a school district like most where some of my teachers or staff don't have a district-issued cell phone, and they're like, well, I'm not going to download an app on my phone because you haven't paid for it. Um, I'm sure we've all heard that. Um, and so this gives them the capability to still be a part of this, but they can opt in on their own. And I don't really have to do much to manage this because all I'm going to do is I'm going to send them a URL or a QR code that they can hover. Maybe I have that in the break room. Um, and they're going to hover over that. It'll take them to a landing page that looks branded, like your school district. And then uh, basically, they're just going to put in their own details and tick box the types of notifications they want to be alerted on on their phone. And at any time, if they choose to change their mind, they just go in there and untick it. Okay. The good thing is, it goes and then puts them into the distribution list behind the scenes, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay. And then all of my employees are being managed through Active Directory usually, uh, you know, or some other HR system that people are leaving the district or coming into the district, then that gets, you can be, that can be automated. So, um, you know, people are purged or added. We also, just one quick note, have a, what we call an anonymous user. So it's a capability of, let's say I have somebody visiting or maybe I have a substitute teacher there for the week. Uh, when he or she checks in at the front desk, you want them to also potentially be alerted on their cell phone about specific things that are happening in the district. So you could just say to them as part of their check-in, text join to this cell phone number or to this number and you'll be added to our emergency notifications for the week. So it, it gives you a really quick and easy way to add those kind of people. Or even if I just out of a duty of care have somebody fixing plumbing in one of my rooms and I want them to be alerted. I want to make sure that I've covered my bases and that they're going to be alerted as well. Okay, you can do stuff like that. So uh, we can also call a cell phone. So, you know, if you, let's say you want to be really intrusive uh, and it's like HR calling and you want to tell people something before they come back to school, you could actually dial out to their cell phones and have it play a pre-recorded message. You know, hi, this is Weld School District's HR. Please listen carefully to the following message. Okay. Um, and then obviously we can send an email. Um, usually that's for more backup information or just more instructional information. Collaboration, uh, one of the key elements I wanted to talk about is conference call. So there's actually a conference bridge built into the software. And so what it gives you the capability to do, and San Diego uses this, and if somebody has like a lockdown, it's only for certain circumstances, right? And you can use it for lots of different scenarios. But for lockdown, they call local San Diego police, they call the superintendent, and they call their safety and security team. It dials out automatically to those people. If I don't get you on your first number, I can escalate to a secondary and a third number. But it makes sure that everybody's joined in a conference call, and in real time, we're talking about what needs to be done immediately right now. 
We see when there's an emergency, when something goes wrong, usually what the problem is, is that somebody assumes that somebody's doing something that they should be doing, but maybe they're not doing. So how do I get everybody on the same page at the same time? And that's where that conference bridge capability could be really critical to help do that. Okay. I'm going to pause for a second and see if there's any questions before we go into the demo room that we've got here. So please don't be shy, guys. Just ask away because I want to make sure you get everything answered. No? All good. No, you don't no. have any? Don't, don't worry if you don't have any. Um, I just want to make sure. Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. I'm going to bring my demo room over here. Um, you don't need to see my background. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, this room is actually in Madison, Wisconsin. That's where our uh, our headquarters is. Um, and so what do we have in this room? What am I looking at? Um, I'm looking at a couple of Atlas IED speakers in there. Um, basically, those give you the capability of the flashers and the scrolling attacks that you saw. They also uh, have, could have a full duplex capability on them. So uh, I'm the principal, and I want to around the front office, and I want to talk into a classroom one to one, and say, "Hey, send Billy to the principal's office," and the teacher could say, "Hey, Billy's on his way." Right? So it gives you even that non-emergency capability of back and forth communication. Um, and so there's also a variety of Cisco phones here, and there's some digital signage. We do have a couple of strobes here. Maybe they're in a hard to hear area, a laboratory, metal class, whatever it might be, right? Got a lot of equipment or noise going on, and you want people to be able to consume a message. Um, so we've got those kind of capabilities. And Atlas also has strobe type uh, functionality. So what am I going to do here? Um, I am going to do a emergency lockdown into this room so you can see how everything is engaged. Um, I'm going to trigger this actually from my laptop. But if you remember that one slide, I can trigger from anything on the left there, even click my Cisco phone, my mobile phone, et cetera, et cetera. Here we go. Okay, so you can see the flashers, the scrolling of the text. I, this is an emergency, so I've got it in red. Um, I've got my Cisco phones there. Um, I can, if I have a color capable phone, even put text on the screen and change the color of the screen. I don't know how well you can see this, but there's actually a respond button, the second soft key that's here. For an emergency lockdown, I have three questions that I'm asking. I want people, because what I'm trying to do is take a whole district or a whole school, and I'm trying to whittle it down to the small group of people that need assistance now. So I want to know what device they're, they're responding from, and I don't want free flow answers, because then I might be reading through several hundred and trying to figure out, and I don't have time for that. I want to have them put into groups. So I have safe inside the building, safe outside the building, or I need help, okay? And they can just push that button and those will pop up on the screen. Um, if you have a uh, if you have a non-color screen, no problem. We can still put that text onto the screen there. It doesn't have to be a color screen, okay? And also, you can have the respond button as you can see here, okay? Uh, digital sign. Yes, sir. Where do those responses get recorded? So, because uh, the trigger is, you know, if it's from a laptop, that's one thing where you can pull things up. But if you're triggering from a Cisco phone in a classroom, you know, across the district. You know, uh, how do you how do you see those results? Where somebody let's say says I need help, you know, where where are you seeing that at? Um, if you yeah, I'm going to show you that here okay. just in a second. It's an excellent question. So obviously you're going to have key personnel that are going to be flagged as people that that do that, um, and they can manage that from the user interface on their computer, or if they're mobile, they can manage that whole thing from their cell phone. So they don't have to be in one spot because. <laughs> Maybe I'm actually just arriving at school and it's just gone on lockdown and I'm in my car, right? So, and it's not safe for me to enter the building. So this gives you full flexibility with that. So I'll show you where that is here shortly. Sure, um, absolutely. And so here we got a digital signage. This is an example of what popped up on my other screen of my laptop. This is what we call persistent. So it's gonna pop up in front of whatever I'm working on. If I'm working from home, 
um, and I'm getting a coffee in the kitchen, I'm gonna have audio come screaming through my computer and this is gonna pop up on my laptop. When I get back, it's sitting in front of whatever I was working on. If I'm a teacher presenting, it can take over my whole screen if you wanted to, and now um, everybody can look at this particular image. You, you can make this as customized as you want, whatever color, whatever image, whatever text, you can have your logo here, and again, I can have people answer those questions right from my laptop. Okay, so I'm not going to say, hey, I need help, and choose that. That it application, I have a question real quick. That application, is it both Windows and Mac? It's Windows or Mac. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so this also gives a confirmation to you, so you know as that teacher then, yes, I did send this, and now uh, it's been received by whoever is monitoring this. Uh, from my cell phone, iOS and Android, um, I had, it did come up with a banner, but I had my phone open. So it, you can see it came into our app, and it came, I also received it as a text message. So let's take a look at this. So here it is on my cell phone. I'm also the person that manages incidents, so that's why I have that yellow bar there that I'll go through in a minute. But I'm gonna see this message on my cell phone. Uh, I can re-listen to that, that, that trigger, um, and I can confirm from my cell phone. So maybe I'm working from my home office today, I could say, hey, I'm safe outside the building, and then it's going to give me a confirmation as well. Okay. Um, if I received that as a text message, uh, I still can respond one, two, or three from my cell phone um, so that whoever's monitoring this can see my phone number. They won't see my name because I haven't got the app downloaded, but they're going to still see my cell phone number and they can communicate with me back and forth. Okay. All right. Um, if we go back into the app here, now I'm outside, and to your question there, I couldn't tell who that was, sorry, I don't know your name, but um, this is where I'm going to see if I'm outside where people are responding. So I can basically just push this, I, and as I have the authorization to do this, I can view statistics. So I can see how people are responding. This chart will, will um, hopefully that's big enough for you guys to see. Uh, this pie chart will will grow out on its own. It's going to build out, and you don't have to refresh anything, and it's going to categorize these. All right? I can even see who hasn't responded, so if I want to escalate to those devices or that group of people, I can. Uh, but let's look at who said they need help. Doug Glenn from his Mac said he needs help. So I can individually now follow up or with Doug or with the whole group of people that said they need help at the same time. Okay. Um, I could also say, you know, who said they were safe outside the building? Doug Land from the mobile device. Okay? Um, and then I, that one thing I showed you here a minute ago in terms of this yellow bar, we call this incident manager. Okay? So what this is is I want a one screen where I can manage everything. If I don't want to respond to people from the screen I just showed you, I'm going to push here. It shows me the latest notification that I just sent off. I press the little pencil and I can do follow-ups because this is an ongoing live event. I might want to keep giving updates to different devices or different people. I push the pencil, I select what I want, I push send, okay? Um, and it'll build out so I see all my incidents build here. But this is where it becomes even more important. I'm not sad at my laptop. I don't have access to resources that I might desperately need. Right? I don't have access to a floor plan of the school, and I'm guiding people out of a building, but I don't know where to tell them to go. So I might want to have a school floor plan ready here on my cell phone that loads, so I can say, hey, you need to exit north of the auditorium and exit 103, right? Follow this, whatever I want to say to get them there. Um, maybe I want to have my safety and security plan and a PDF ready because my people that are looking at this forgot what to do. So they have this accessible. Maybe I want a Zoom emergency uh, meeting room where have all my safety and security people, they don't have to remember where to go. We just tap here and we're all joined into a meeting together. Or maybe I have some key camera angles that I want to go look at. So I have them pre-populated here so I can just tap. I don't, I'm not logging out of this app, logging into a video management system. This is taking me directly into there. Okay. Um, any questions about that? No? Okay. And then when I'm ready, I can end this incident here and press confirm. Or 
I can go out to what we call our command center, which is that real easy way to trigger an event, and I can have my different events loaded here. Not everybody gets to see this view, maybe, and you can be very granular. This type of teacher can see these buttons, that type of teacher can see those buttons, whatever I want. But I'm gonna send it all clear. I can have all my schools listed. Here I have it by building. So I'm gonna say building three, push send. And then that is gonna trigger an all clear message into that building and to these individuals. Okay, so now I've got the capability, and I did this as a one-way communication this time, but it gives me the ability to just go in and two clicks, I've cleared everybody so they know that, you know, it's always that one day when it's snowing and there's a false, false alarm and you're all hovering over in the parking lot going, when the heck can we go back in? That this, we can just send a message to everybody. You're outside, you hear it on the outdoor horns, you hear it and you see it on your cell phone, okay? And then you can go back in. Now, we do have a rostering capability that just came out too. So if I'm at a Munster station, maybe I'm at a checkpoint outside the parking lot, I'm responsible for X students or staff members. I can start checking people in from that station so that whoever's monitoring this can see, well, Billy's not actually here. I need to, I need to look for Billy somewhere else, right? So you can tell very quickly who's gone missing. So that rostering capability would preload whoever's supposed to be there, and then that teacher or that individual can be able to check those people in. Okay. All right, uh, I'm going to go. Can I ask you one more Doug, question? Does that yes, integrate with our student information system and is it real time? So it could look at attendance and say, well, Jimmy was missing today anyway, so it doesn't, we're not looking for him. So it's a good question. Our visitor management system absolutely does that. What we're working on now, and I need to ask where we are with it, is has that gone into that rostering feature yet? So if we don't have it yet, that is the aim to be able to do that. Because our current visitor management system that I talked about in the beginning does do that. What is okay. the visitor management system you're talking about? It's called Visitor Aware. So it's a face-off against Raptor. Um, I don't know if everybody was in the room when I went through it in the beginning there, but so the visitor management system is called Visitor Aware. I don't want to jump all over, but let me show you a slide real quick so we can we can just cover this off right now. Okay, so we have two components to our visitor management system. I'll literally spend three, four minutes here. Um, so to preface this, what we actually did, and it, it wasn't by selection, but just how we did it. We bought a company that had literally figured out that Raptor was their biggest competitor. So they went out, interviewed a ton of people using Raptor, and I only mention this because you guys are using Raptor. You could be very happy with it, and I'm not trying to persuade you away from that. But what they did was find out that a lot of people that had a lot of number of things they didn't like about Raptor. So they basically plugged all those gaps and fixed whatever people were complaining about. I'll give you a couple of examples. One of them is with Raptor, every school, when you check in, you have to, if I, if I have two students, one in the elementary school and one in the high school, I have to redo all my credentials at the high school if I've already checked in at the elementary school. You don't have to do that with ours. Once you check in, once you're across that entire district, okay? Um, the other thing is we do have facial recognition which gives you a, a plus 99% accuracy. So what people were seeing with Raptor is maybe I have a fake ID. You know, you scan me with a little toaster, scanner from the back of my driving license, but maybe I have a fake ID, okay? Um, and so the way to get away from that is I want to have facial recognition capabilities. And so we can use a webcam or an iPad, <laughs> proprietary, take a picture when you scan that person in, and then it goes and checks them facially against all those da databases behind the scenes. So when you have somebody sitting there that's a volunteer potentially, um, it's actually gone and checked everybody with a very high accuracy. Now, I don't want that volunteer actually having to have a tough conversation with somebody that's just been red flagged. I want Informacast to go notify my safety and security desk behind the scene, pop up on their laptop, 
pop on their Cisco phone, maybe say sexual predator across an Atlas speaker in that room, and then they're gonna go out and pull that person aside. Okay, because I don't want that person at that desk that's vulnerable to actually have that conversation. Okay, um, and so this gives you a lot of different ways and, and a lot of the infrastructure you've already purchased with Raptor, you can use it. You can use the scanners and the printers and all that stuff with, with our software. And so what this is just going to do is give you a software program that's a lot easier to use. We don't charge by checkpoint. You can have as many ingress points as you want. Um, and then it, we have, if you don't want to use facial recognition, you can use a QR code. Uh, we still have that volunteer management capability, but we do it uh, at a dollar a shot. And within seconds, you have that come back. Um, so you don't have to pay a bunch of money to do a volunteer management check in the background. And then we have a nice interface where people can even have a portal then as a volunteer where they go and they sign up for different types of events. So it makes it really simplistic and easy to use. It does sync with your student information system. Um, it has a secure sign, sign in and out for students. You could have Tardy sign in and out. I've, I've shown up late, I now get my Tardy pass, right? Um, we have a student manager layer of this, which has rostering and attendance on it, like I just said, but one thing I wanted to point out is that family reunification. So I just had a lockdown, right? I, I, I have students, I mean, all the, the parents are congregating outside, you know, as a lot of these lockdown situations happen, the second they hear about it, where do they do? Wrongly or rightly, they all flock to the school. You really don't want them doing that because they confuse things, but they are, of course, that's human nature. So they're gonna show up. I wanna check these kids back to their student or guardians, reunify them, but I need an audit trail, because as a school, I don't wanna be liable for that. And so I want to do this in a very organized fashion. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to do that through our student manager system where they bring their QR code printed or on their, on their cell phone. And I can see when I scan that, a picture of them pops up. So I have facial recognition now. And, you know, I, I look at, you can ask for their ID. But also what pops up is who can be checked back to them. Because maybe I'm, maybe I'm a guardian, I'm not a parent, but I have the legal capability to take this child. So you, you'll be able to see who that is and I'll be able to securely check them back, okay? If I have an adult student that's in high school and I'm traveling for work, I can do a remote self-release. So I can do a signature and, and basically for my cell phone, check that student back out because I can't make it to the school, right? Um, we also have a secure carpool pickup. So if you had a queue of cars coming up and you have a monitor there, uh, I could have somebody scanning a QR code in the dash of the car that tells me who I can release to that car, or I could have uh, somebody with their cell phone just pop it up and I scan their cell phone. That then pops back into the school where the teacher sees, oh, now I can send these people out, okay? So uh, we also have, are working on a, a bus capability like that. So I don't want my kid to get on the wrong bus so they can scan a QR code when they get on and off the bus. And by the way, then the parent can even be notified where their kid is on which bus and when they're going to get off of the stop. So that's, uh, I mean, we would have hated that as kids, but we live in a different world now, right? So this gives a very secure way to be able to do that if you chose to implement that as a module. You don't have to do that. Um, so lots of different things we can do here. There's also a like, kind of tick line, see something, say something. I saw a kid in, with a gun in the backpack at recess. I want to anonymously go put something in the tip line. Okay. So there's a very comprehensive system here that then integrates into what I've been showing you, which is that Informacast notification system behind the scenes. So if you want to see a demo of that at a later date, we can take that offline and show you an in-depth demo of exactly what this can do for you. Any questions about that? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So um, I'm going to show you one more thing here. Um, well, let me quickly do one slide on duress uh, just to recap that. And then I'm actually gonna show you the, you the user interface so you can see what this looks and feels like because I think that's important for you to see. So this is the duress one that I was alluding to at the very beginning of our meeting. And so uh, it gives you that mobile app capability. Um, so if I wanted to um, 
actually show you a panic button. This is what it looks like on my phone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute that room I can hear air conditioning. Okay, um, the panic button, and you can make these, they're just bigger buttons. They don't have to have these other buttons below it. They can just have a panic button. You could have a secondary medical button, whatever you want. Um, so I do panic button, is it two press? Because I don't want people to accidentally be sending panic buttons. And then I can press send. Okay, what does that do? That's gonna send this message, which is totally customizable uh, to that back to that person that just pressed it. It's basically saying if you're in immediate danger, dial 911, you don't want them fumbling around in a panic and having to go back out and dial it. They can just press this 911 quick dial right there. As the person receiving this, I'm the safety and security person, I'm receiving Doug Glenn just press the panic button here or on my computer. So I'm just showing you what it looks like from the mobile device. Um, then I can say push view location, and it's now put me on a map. So I can do a follow-up, see the little follow-up button here to say, hey Doug, I'm on my way, so that that person knows they've been hurt. Um, or hey, enter in through the north door, I'll meet you there, whatever I wanna say to this person, I can say. If I'm driving around or walking around campus, I could just go, hey, get directions, just press the directions, and it's gonna basically walk me or drive me to where this person is. Okay, so this is a great solution that if you have people that are walking around and feel threatened, that you can literally put them on a map. Now, do I want everybody to, and it's only GPS tracking me once I do that, and once I finished here, it doesn't know where I'm at. So it's very much an opt-in capability that I'm somebody that's okay with you knowing where I'm at, and I have location services turned on. Okay, I know there's unions and all these kind of questions and things that get discussed around this type of stuff. So it might be just specific people that you have using this, or you've agreed that certain people have opted that are okay with it. Okay, um, and then when I'm done with that, I can literally just push in tracking. It says stop tracking the user, and now I've stopped tracking that person. So when I go back in here, you'll see um, that this person now is no longer being tracked. Okay, so along with these other type of wearable type solutions I was telling you about, the wearables use of Bluetooth. So it'll literally overlay them uh, onto a map of your school. So you'll be able to see specifically what room or hallway or out, even outside where they're at. So those are other things that people are using. But this is a good way with, this comes with the software. It's nothing extra to buy. Okay, so you would just automatically get that. Any questions about panic buttons? Uh, something that I thought I saw there, when you were looking at the actual like emergency message that got sent to you about the panic button, I said, I think pretty sure unless I, it went by quick, but I saw like a play button there. Is there like a recorded message that comes along with that? <clears throat> no, there's not, a, there's not. I mean, if I press this again, you'll see, um, right now it's saying, are you sure you want us okay. to share your location? I sent that. Um, this is not allowing you to play. Um, I have that pink button on the top. It's only because I'm the person that gets the, the, the thing. Yeah, so like go to uh, what you saw. Yeah. yeah, like the person receiving it, there's like the little seven second, it looked like recording yeah. message yeah. or something. I think you're thinking of when I send a notification and I look at my notification. Uh, at the bottom, yes, yeah. I can replay that notification. That's probably where you're okay. seeing that. Okay. So this is a, hey, I've just gotten a ping in my notification. I want to hear what they're saying again. I can replay it on my cell phone. And is that just like an emergency, like pre-recorded message? Or is, like, is the person pressing the panic button actually able to say something to give you information in that? Yeah, we, we, yeah, we don't have that okay. capability on here right now. Um, not to say we wouldn't develop that. I mean, th through the development that we did, that wasn't a major uh, requirement from this. a lot of the school districts that we interviewed when we were developing it. But that doesn't mean we wouldn't add that later if somebody wanted that. The key thing we see with the panic button is you want it to be as quiet as possible. Um, so you want, in most cases, the user that's pressing it doesn't want anybody around them to know that they've pressed it. So that's why we've done it the way that we did it. But that doesn't mean that, you know, we're constantly evolving this. So it could be something that you could request. I mean, 
to be honest with you, how, how do we get uh, our, develop, our developers creating new things? We do that through listening to what the customers are requesting. So we actually, this panic button to begin with, was actually a school district, uh, a, a, current, a group of customers that asked for it. So we, we went and scheduled it into our development schedule. So every three months, we have a new release where we have these new things. You don't pay extra for them, they just become available to you. Okay, so we're constantly being asked for features and we load them in there and then new things pop up that are available to you and we make sure you're aware of what some of these new things are. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Can I uh, jump in and add to that, Doug? Yes, sir. So one of the things that we do is we have a uh, third party consultant that works with us. When I say us, I have to say the wire necklace. He's a, uh, an ex uh, SWAT team member who's took it uh, personally to try to help schools educate um, things that they can do to, to help first responders as well to give them some best practice tips in regards to how to properly uh, put together some procedures or policies for critical alerts. And one of the things that he does is he does a lot of research on incidents across the country and compiles the data to kind of show you know things that are working and not working. And the reason why we do things like this, and this is where Doug's coming from, he's getting up from schools, is that when you have an incident, you want to have a pre-recorded announcement that is very clear and, and intelligible. What they've shown and, and what Azusa has shown in his presentation is that when you try to do things live in a real incident, people panic, they get jittery, they, they have a tendency to not be able to speak clearly, and so the, the live messaging during that point of time is very difficult for everybody on campus to be able to comprehend what they need to do. So what they do is they have predefined, pre-recorded messages that are very clear with the instructions. And then if the scenario is somebody needs to give live uh, instructions, they have a authorized person, like somebody from the uh, first responders, get on the system live and then give you know uh, verbal instructions that are clear and concise. And they might even do it by building as an example, and single work can do it to that level, to where they might evacuate one building and tell them, go to behind the gym, that's where we have the buses, we're gonna get you off campus. So these are some of the things that we do by design and the software, it's not a limitation, it's with the consensus for getting back from schools with those that have had incidents, as well as those that are getting consulting based on these are the things that you should think about and doing. Absolutely. And I can show, thanks Manny, I can show you guys what this looks like, right? So let me just right size this a little bit. Okay. So this is a user interface, right? Where a lot of this stuff is pre-programmed in. And I don't want to get detailed in here, but I'm going to show you how simple this is to use. So it's like a dashboard. So it does come with pre-populated, a lot of the use cases if we know you're a K-12 customer, it's going to come with some, some K-12 use cases already loaded that you can tweak a little bit to your satisfaction, but they're already there. Um, you have uh, all your templates here, all your distribution lists, all your users. So what you're going to do, let's just look at an example. Um, and please ignore the fact there's a ton of stuff in here because it's a demo system. But this is the one I've been sending off that I've sent off into this room as an emergency lockdown. So let's look at how simple this is. Remember, you're going to set these up once and leave them. But because it's usually written around the policy and to manage my best practice. However, if I needed to go in here and tweak something ever so slightly before I send it, I'm going to show you how easy this is to do. So I'm going to name this my emergency lockdown template. I just type in, what do I want to say, subject and body. Okay, and it's literally just free flow type. Um, I can click whether I want audio on here, if I want to load an image, if I want to ask a question, and if I want to have that preloaded incident plan. If I unclick this, it doesn't become available to me. So it just makes it interactive. Um, this is the audio. And so I can literally push record here, and I can record a message by pushing record or upload a WAV file. Or I can go text to speech. And then I can, whatever I've written in here on my subject and body will just be read to me. 
and I can choose uh, what language I want that in, if I want a different language, and if I want a different voice. Maybe I don't want a female voice, maybe I want a male voice. We have a variety of both. Um, then I can say, hey, read the subject, read the body, read both, or I can customize what I want you to read. Okay? And then I can play it, and it's going to be locked down. Please follow lockdown procedures and wait for the all clear notification. It's going to play my, my example of what I've just said there. I can have an alert tone. I can select a bunch of different tones. I just got this from the internet. I wanted an image to be. You saw how it came up on my cell phone and on my laptop and everything. Um, and then I have these different questions for emergency lockdown. I have uh, questions which literally, when I create those in a different menu uh, to be accessible, all I'm doing is putting, pushing a plus sign and typing a question, pushing a plus sign and typing a question. That's how simple it is to set to create this. Um, I can even create a new confirmation question right here if I want to. So if I want to do something on the fly and create a new question, I can just push click plus. Um, then my incident plan. So this is where I'm going to load. I push plus, and this is where I'm uploading. You saw the floor plan, my safety and security document, whatever I want. And I just upload them from anywhere. Then I decide where do I want this to go, right? I've already decided what I want to say and how I want to say it, but then where do I want it to go? So through here, through drop down menus, I have all my distribution lists ready, different device groups, so speaker groups or Cisco phones or analog paging zones. Maybe I have an individual that's not in my main distribution list I want to add. I can do that really simply. Um, and then I can decide how long do I want this to play before it stops. Um, and then I push save. And so that's how easy it is to build everything that you saw happen in that demo room. So if I want to come in here and all of a sudden just tweak, you know, uh, you know, uh, active shooter in red hat or whatever I want to say, you know, uh, or in, in red hoodie, I, I can do that, right? And then send it. So my key point there is you can do whatever you want really simple through a user interface that is very easy to interact with. And you're only going to give key individuals access to that. Now what I can do is I can have these buttons on anyone's laptop or desktop and I don't even give them access into the user interface. I just have them actually have access to a button, you know, evacuate and then it pops up what building go, right? So they don't have to have the full access into a user interface. Any questions? Hopefully you can see how easy that is to navigate. Now all your app. Yes. I was just going to throw in here. I know we're throwing a lot out there in regards to the horsepower. But the reality is, and this is the things I get asked a lot by schools as we're doing this, the simplicity, the, the, the ease of use, the programming. The reality is, is that as you're setting up the system and like John showed you, that's also part of the mobile phone part. You don't have a separate entity where you're setting up your command center and then you have to go to another application to set up the mobile or another platform to set up the mobile. What he just did, what he just showed you, which makes it so easy to apply it to both the mobile and, and the desktops and things like that. That's really super cool. And that's one of the reasons why when he showed you the mobile app, the buttons and the configurations match the actual computer buttons and, 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 and uh, construction and things like that. So it's super easy from a setup and it's super easy from a user. Yeah, when, to Manny's point, when I create something in here, it gets mirrored here. Okay, and if I have some kind of permissions that I've set up in here that I don't want a specific user to see a certain button, they're logged into their mobile phone. It's not going to show them that button. Okay, so super easy. I use this to set it up, and then it just mirrors straight onto my mobile app. Likewise, all these users that I have on mobile users, I can bulk upload them, or I can do self, I, I can make it that it's automated. You know, people are leaving the district every night, people are joining the district every day. Um, I can have it automatically purge and add. 
Um, and then I can have that self-help tool where they can go and put their own personal devices and opt in. So it makes it super user friendly um, for you to be able to, to navigate this. Hey Doug, excuse me one second. Uh, Memory, I just wanted to see how we're doing on time. Uh, 150, so is that about 10 minutes? 10 minutes. And then are we uh, hitting the, the points of things you'd like to see okay? Is there anything that needs to be addressed still? Well, this was created by everybody in here, so if they have any questions. Okay, good. Did you guys have any other questions about the endpoints themselves, the hardware? What's the availability? Manny? Bob, availability? Um, right there, in stock. We, we have to keep them in stock because schools are buying them up like crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> we so, have a lot of inventory. So, so, they, so let's put this way. If we wanted to do a school this summer, yes. could we do that? Yes. If we wanted to do our entire district this summer, could we do that? Uh, how, I, yeah. Manny, how about slide. the district? How, how many schools would that? And your name is? Nine. 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 Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Manny, how, how about if they're looking at doing the whole school district? I know we're talking about, what, three schools? We're talking right? about two schools this summer, one school next summer. Those are our new schools. Okay. And next then we summer have, and the summer after. Okay. Oh, next summer and the summer after. Okay. But we have nine retrofits. Okay. We want the whole system to be on the same system. Sure. Instead of running two systems. Right? Sure. So we have the funding to be able to do that. Okay. Bob, Manny? Um, so, so the, the short answer is yes, I'll have availability uh, for you, but one of the things that Larry and Bob or my sales team do is they work very closely with our TD Port AV to provide forecasting, so in addition to part of the bill of material, the investment when you're going to need it by rebuilding in the next Texas. Yes. So as soon as we have that information and we get an idea of when you want to take access of them, they're ready to go. And that's the nice thing, they're made down in Anastasia, that's south of Dallas, so it's made here in the United States, they can ship them out. We so, also have a huge warehouse in uh, your DIA, so we stock a lot of product here too. Yes. To alleviate that shipping delay. The well, one question I have is, is what would we need to put in a classroom to outfit it? Just uh, in a smaller classroom? Just a classroom. Probably a clock, clock speaker with a one of these? That's one it? These. Typically That's all we would need? Typically yes. they put one of those in every classroom and then we'll have, I mean, we can show you, you know, some of the products Atlas makes the endpoints, but, you know, we have hallway stuff. And things like what that. about a call yes. button? We, we have call buttons as well. Does it connect to that or do we have to connect it to a different? No, it would connect to that. Yes. Are we able to integrate that into other speakers? We are. In fact, this actually has enough power where we can run it to another speaker. So we could actually have just a regular... 70 volt speaker in the classroom. So if it's a big music room, we could do that as well. Yeah. And then of course you could, you guys, as you guys know, you can control each one of the volumes for each each size classroom as well. So we yeah. can set that up as well. Is that a, is that, that's done in software, correct? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to have any of the te we <clears throat> we used to do another one where the teachers could actually control and they'd turn the volume all the way down, or then they'd take the grill off and stuff paper in yeah. here, and then they're like, well, we didn't hear any announcement for this. All right, I think we have another question on the school. Well, and I think that dashboard, maybe we'll do something to look at, because then you can okay. see how to adjust the volume, but then okay. the calendar and bell schedule and yeah. things like that, okay. something to touch on real quick. So, I mean, this is, this one's older, but um, you can come in here, and you, you guys come like, over this way? Over here, I don't know. We're just trying to turn it right But there's a number of, I mean, what Doug was showing was Fusion, so it's a little more updated, a little more clean, but, you know, virtually you get the same thing, so you'll see, you know, up here on the right, it just says IP speakers, so these are all your, your endpoints, basically. If you go in here, you'll see there's a list of all the demo stuff that we've been connected to, <coughs> connected to, so this is basically the Bob's speaker, and then the zone control over here, which is running the... 70 volt speaker. And that's um, dynamic, right? So the white. So guys, I can show the bell schedules from here if you want to share my screen if you want to see what it looks like. Okay, that would be good. If I go in here, yeah. you can see I can easily just any of these devices, is, uh, I can volume up and down and, um, and send message to specific speakers even from that. And but that's dynamic, right? So in other words, those whites that they're online, if they're yes, different colors, it's offline. Yes. So I, yep. I see that in real time. Yep. So yep. if I have a speaker that's down, I, I can. Yep. I can and do that's that. what it's showing right now, because yep. those are all the devices yep. I've hooked up to in the past, and things like that. Yeah, yep. makes sense. 
Yeah, go ahead, Doug. With the yeah, sure. Okay. Six minutes. 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 So, the, the key here, and this is great because this gives you the ability to delegate out because it's super simple to use, right? So, it's just a calendar format, and I have my overarching bell schedule, and I can have different schedules in different parts of the day. I can see all of my schools from one view. Um, I can have when people log in, they only see their schools if they want, and instead of seeing the whole district. Um, but let's go ahead and look in here. So let's look at a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. So on here, I have a description of what it is. And then it's as simple as I am going to put a time, put whatever ringtone I want, which you have access to thousands of ringtones, or I could actually, uh, it's any WAV file, right? So we even have a school district that does an elementary school. They do a Rooster Pro in the morning, and on a Friday afternoon, this afternoon, they'll do the Star Wars theme to usher the kids out for the weekend, right? So anything you want. Um, you can then, then we have what's called device groups. So this is where you're gonna add whatever speakers uh, that you want. You can even make anything a school bell. So I can make a computer a school bell, a Cisco phone a school bell, even a cell phone a school bell, okay? Like I, with that example I gave you with San Diego, how they vibrate the deaf student's cell phone. So you can do that. Um, and then you can have as many entries as you want, and it's as easy as you just click here, the plus, to add a bell, okay? Now, um, if I go back to my overarching schedule, um, this is for the whole school year, so start and stop. I can have different patterns, so if I have a Saturday school pattern or whatever it might be, or a, or a summer school pattern. Um, and then through, here I have a drop down menu. So I, this is my Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. I might want to put in a two hour delay. We actually had it during a fire warning, uh, a district where they wanted a two hour delay. Superintendent called the IT director, he pulled over, logged into this through his cell phone, clicked on two hour delay across the whole district. That easy, okay? Um, also, I can have exceptions here. So this school happens to be, in an, uh, this elementary school is in a, in a neighborhood. I don't want people during Thanksgiving dinner to hear all the bells going off all day, right? So I can put all my school holidays in at the beginning of the year, and then away we go. We have no bells during those days, and then I push save, okay? So super, super simple, easy to use, um, and then I have this visual, and I can just go in and change or tweak anything on the fly without any issues. Any questions about that? Can you do that district-wide, or is that per, per location supply input? A schedule that's a holiday schedule and it's applicable to the entire district. Is that is that automatically applied or do I have to do it specific to each school? You can do it either way. Because some would be like an elementary school might have different uh, conference minutes. Sure. So I would need to manipulate you, that where a holiday, Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving. So they're going to be out at the same time. Yeah, you can even do where I want this part of the building to be different than that part of the building. Maybe I have an adult school in part of the building and I want completely different exceptions for that part of the building. I can do that. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Anything Perfect. else? Anybody? You got two minutes. Might as well done. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you. Uh, <laughs> you just want to make sure there was nobody. You know, we didn't get that you guys have. You know, a serious need say, or that you're saying, hey, we want. We don't have this right now. But we're hoping to be able to do this. We just want to make sure when we have everybody on, we can. Make sure we're hitting everything for you guys. Yeah. Because obviously we do this all over the country. Every school is different in what they want to do or what they're looking for. But, you know, we, we do a lot of it. So. And if anything else comes up from us, oh, I forgot to ask you this. I'll reach out to you. Yeah, for sure. We'll yeah. Yeah. Thank for you guys sure. for all your time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Sure. What was that, Manny? Big yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wanted to at least uh, just address one more thing that was on the question uh, uh, packet that we got sent. Uh, do, do we still have everybody there? Uh, yes, yes, we do. Yes. We got. Okay. Do you guys mind if I share my screen? It's a hot call. Just stop. Go ahead. As long okay. as it's school appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> okay. Right. Can you guys see my screen okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So to give you a little peace of mind, typically what we do when we're uh, designing the system for you guys, 
we go over something like this. We look at all the different spaces that you have in your school, and then the models that I have up here are the most common models that are used from K through 12 throughout the country. Some of the areas that you notice, you see our zone controller, that IP, the analog gateway. The reason why we do that is because typically in the cafeteria, it can get loud or it's very large space. So we do what we call hybrid systems in there, where we put analog speakers in the ceilings and all of that's tied back in the zone controller. And then, of course, it's talking to the informing app software. But this is what your ecosystem looks like. We're not doing anything proprietary. So you have your call manager, you have your, your informing cast appliance, everything's on the same voice VLAN for the technical guys there. We're not doing anything proprietary, very minimal traffic. Um, so it's easy to uh, add these devices into the ecosystem. But in some of the areas, you're going to see like an end of war. Depending on the type of school that we're going to deploy, we might want to consider some different options. So higher grade levels like high schools, there's a lot of distractions between classes. Kids usually have earbuds in their ears and they're talking about cars and sports and all these sort of things. So we'll use displays uh, in the hallways to get their attention, take the earbuds off, to listen to the announcement, read the visuals and stuff like that. Earlier grades, we don't necessarily need the displays in, in the corridors. We can go with another hybrid system um, that we would use to you know, cover the space or audio and things like that. When we're looking at things like athletics or performing arts, you see my zone controller there. A couple of reasons why we do that. In every case, we have to think about how can we communicate effectively to occupants. And the rule of thumb is, is that not only do we want to cover all the spaces, but we want to eliminate any competition or, or distractions. Competitions or distractions being maybe another multimedia system playing in the same space. This is one of the things that were in the questions that was asked. How do we integrate into the audio enhancement pieces? To give you peace of mind, all the connectivity that you need is built into my devices. All of my devices have contact closures, relays, um, audio inputs and outputs on them to allow you to connect those local multimedia systems directly into my devices. So you need no additional wiring outside the room. They literally go right to that. I can route audio through the inputs and outputs. So when you get a message from Informacast, my product knows that Informacast is always going to take the priority. It will mute that local system, or if you want, it can use that local system as sound reinforcement and push the message back into that, right? So in regards to the classroom, any of the multimedia systems, including the systems that the teacher used with microphones for sound reinforcement, we can integrate them to that using the Atlas devices, okay? If your teacher microphone systems have panic buttons on them, we can use the interfaces on my device, tie that panic button directly to my device, and so when the teacher presses the panic button, it triggers an Bartman cast to activate an event. So all of my all of my peripherals talk to InformaCast, even so much down to the relay. There's a relay on my device. We can actually tell the relay, I only want you to activate on a first level priority one emergency critical alert in InformaCast. During the bell schedule, a public announcement, whatever the case may be, the relay does nothing. But in that active shooter drill, your relay fires off. That might be the device that you use to trigger your access control, your cameras, or any other third-party devices in there. So it's very specific on how you choose to integrate into third-party systems. But again, you don't need other boxes, you don't need any additional wiring, and you don't need any middleware. It's that simple. Make sense? Oh, yes, awesome. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Manny. Thank you. Thanks. All right, now we're ready to wrap up. No. Yeah. Well, thank you, team Manny yeah, and you. Bob and uh, Ben and Thomas and Corey and Larry. Thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you, guys. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Yeah, that's right. It's fresh. Yeah.